All right. So we've been talking just a little bit. Um, There's uh, there a few different ways we could have went this morning, but I think uh, I just heard pop up in my heart real strong is we're gonna we gotta talk about pride this morning. Amen. We gotta talk about pride, and um, uh, because God is so good. One of the things that he does not want his, you don't want your children to do. How many of you want your children uh, when they're riding their bike? You ever, you ever watch children, the first time bike rider child? What do they have typically? You ever see that? Like the, like the one, the mo- overprotective parent, mom and dad. You know what I'm talking about? Like they look like they can't get hurt. Bubble wrap. You ever seen that where like you go out, so they, they are covered up. Why? Because... They don't want their child to do what? To get hurt. To fall. How many of you have ever seen this? This happened when we were at camp. Uh, A little baby fell out of the stroller in in whitewater and hit its head on the ground. And instantly mom was like, oh, baby, baby, baby. You know, because the baby fell. Right? And so in a a mom, in a dad, in a father, uh, in a protector, in a good parent, when their child falls, they're not like, did you hurt the concrete? You know? I mean, we kind of do that a little bit as they get older just to kind of take. <laughs> listen, listen, that's a long ways from the heart, buddy. Rub a little dirt on it. <laughs> you know, but really when they're little, <laughs> you know, you want to you raise boys that are, are tough, you know, you want to raise, uh, uh, you know, tender hearts, you know, tough exteriors, right? Um, but, but there, there is a time when, and, and, and seriously, if they're hurt, you, you always are there to help, right? You, you want to make it to where they don't get hurt. And so pride, um, go ahead and put up the Proverbs chapter 16, 18. It, um, let's go there first. And it says that pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit goes before a fall. So if what we're talking about this morning is the fall, not falling. How many of you believe that God doesn't want you to fall? He doesn't want you to get hurt. He doesn't want you and your, your and my life to be destructive. And now, can I talk about falling? You can fall off the stage. You can fall off your bike. Well, we were just in Colorado, and uh, there were some places that we were that had one of my boys fallen, how many of you know it wouldn't be this fallen from the stage? How many of you know it could have changed the life or even whether or not you had a life? And so we're talking about the quality of of our lives or life in general because of a decision that we make that we make that is not brought before the Lord, okay? So now, listen, and, and, and matter of fact, um, in Proverbs chapter 6, um, it, it, I, I did give you this verse talking about the things that the Lord hates. Last week we talked about how the Lord, you know, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. It says, and, it, and, and then in Proverbs chapter 6, 16, it says, these are the things, six things the Lord hates, seven that are detestable to him. There's actually that same passage uh, in Proverbs chapter 8 where it says, to, uh, to fear the Lord is to hate evil. It says it, it's, it's a, a correspondent, right? You're, you're awesome. So to fear the Lord is to hate evil. It says it, pri- hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior, and perverse speech. You'll find in Proverbs chapter 6 that all those things are perfectly congruent. There's three things here he says in, in Proverbs chapter 8. But if you go into Proverbs chapter 6, all of the six and the seventh thing, okay, all of those fit in within these three things. The pride and arrogance, evil behavior, or perverse talk. Those three things, if we go back to Proverbs chapter 6, you'll see he says these six things, the Lord hates, seven are detestable to him. And he says, haughty eyes, that's that proud look, isn't it? And how about a lying tongue? Is that perverse speech? And then the next couple are actions, right? The, the, these, these wrong actions, Shedding innocent blood, in other words, killing. Uh, heart devising evil and wicked schemes. And feet that are quick to just run to evil. Like, how many times did we see in the Old Testament when, when the Lord wanted to bring correction and the word of the Lord, the prophet, would come to the king or to, and say, hey, this isn't right. But they would say, I'm doing it anyway. They're quick. Did you know 
this still happens today, except for the prophet that's coming to you is called the Holy Spirit. And he's like, hey, let's not do that. And you're like, I'm doing it anyway. I'm doing my way. Evil is a way, when we say our way is above God's way. Okay? Um, Vita or quick is evil. Next verse. Uh, and and then, he's, then the, la- the last one is a false witness who pours out lies and a person who stirs up conflict in the community. Or uh, that's, uh, if you were to put that up in any most translations, it would say among the brethren, the community. Um, and among the brethren, why that's so important, that term, not just community. And this is why it's important to have, uh, to be able to be a, a, a to, to look at the word of God according to what is the base scripture, because they're trying to give an idea. But the brethren, he's talking about the community of believers or the body or within the, their body, their assembly, the, uh, within Judah, within, uh, yeah, with, among the brethren. But, but with the, the, 12, the, the 12 tribes, he's, this is written about the, the people of God. Okay? The children of God, the 12 tribes, you would stir up and divide a Israel and a Judah. That you would be a divided nation. You think that was God's plan? No. Anyway, and pa- Pastor Evan and I were talking last week. And so you see those last two, a false witness, one who speaks lies, and one who swords discord among the brethren. Um, the first six, right, God hates because those are sins against yourself. But the next one is sin against his people, against his so it's interesting about that. But anyway, I want to just um, talk this morning. Let's go back to Proverbs chapter 3, and we're going to read this. And uh, Proverbs 3, uh, four, we'll start in verse 4. And this is a pretty common uh, uh, quoted scripture. Um, uh, let's go to the next one. It says, trust in the Lord, uh, thank you, with all of your heart, and lean not to your own understanding." Right? How many of you ever quoted that scripture? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart and lean not to your own understanding. We say this quite often here. Your heart, uh, you can lie to your heart, but your heart won't lie to you. In other words, you'll always know from within there'll be a scratching. God made it that way. The Bible says that our own heart is what convicts us, right? Or, or actually condemns us, makes the jerk, makes the call. Where the Holy Spirit convicts, right? Uh, the, our hearts are what, what brings that the call, in a sense, all right? Um, anyway, he says, trust the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your understanding. In all your ways, submit to him, and he will make your path straight. How many of your Bibles say acknowledge him? Okay. Uh, the word there, submit, is the word yada. Yada meaning to know. Yada, to know your wife on your honeymoon night, marriage night. You know what you had? Yada. You know, what you, you know what happens when you come together for the first time? You get to yada. You get to know one another. There's intimacy where the, 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 that's what it means to know. This word submit there, or your, most Bibles would say it this way, in all your ways acknowledge him. In all your ways know him. In all your ways be intimate with him. In all your ways come and yada with him. Come and check in with him. Know him. Hey, what do you think about this? Have you ever heard someone say, and yada, yada, yada? But what they were saying is, you know, you know, you know. Right? Like you say, da-da-da, and yada, yada. And then, the, like they fill in the blanks because it's, 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 it's things that is assumed that you just know. It's important in all your ways, find out. Lord, what do you think about this? Because it's easy for you and I to decide our own way. Instead of asking the Lord, I'm talking to having the chocolate cake. Why not? You think, you think that uh, you think God doesn't care? Hey, hey, we, yeah. He's like, yeah, get that big piece. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. Because is that what it says? In all your ways, or just only the big decisions? Like, is He is He with you in everything? Absolutely. In all your ways, acknowledge Him. What deer stand should I go to? I remember talking to uh, Travis, uh, he's a good buddy of mine, and I, I talk about hunting. It's so funny who somebody said they're making bets on. It was Landon and Adam Workman. They're up in the booth, and they're taking bets. They wager. I don't know if it's actually cash or what. But is how, you know, they set a time in the sermon when Pastor Nate will mention or talk something about hunting. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I don't know if you made that wager this morning, did you? No, darn. Um, but <laughs> y'all can be betting in church, I guess. I, um, but one of the things that, that, that his wall is covered in, in, in deer, and, and he's had lots of opportunities at Big Bucks and um, taken lots of people on opportunities at Big Bucks. Uh, and he, he said this statement years ago um, when we were talking, and I said, I believe that 100%, is that God cares about the little things in your life. And I, I enjoy hunting. I enjoy being out there. And I asked the Lord. I asked the Lord to lead me in my hunting. You know, so you just check. Oh, I think I'm going to go sit on the ground over here. You got all these stands and all this corn up, but you're going to go sit on the ground by this log on the, where you've never been before? Yeah, and shoot a big buck off the ground that night. Because uh, why? Because the Lord cares. In all your ways. Wait, what, should I sit in that stand or that stand? You know, we have all these game cameras out there where you're taking pictures of where the trails are and there's deer and this buck's here and this buck's here and this buck's there. And sometimes we spend uh, too long trying to figure out where to sit based on pictures, based on here, based on what we see, instead of just checking with the Lord. You know, it's just like, that's, that's great, all that's there, but where do you, Lord, where do you say? Right? Um, and it's easy to, to just navigate life in such a way where it's just self-assess, 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 self-assess. But there's a way that seems right, and the end is not right. Okay? So anyway, so he goes, let's, let's, go, let's go on a little bit here. Do not be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and shun evil. Now, I want to just talk about the, the first piece of evil today. Fear the Lord and shun evil. So all of what we're talking about um, one of the things that when he says to fear the Lord and shun evil, he says about arrogant look or a proud look or haughty eyes. Anybody ever have haughty eyes? Here, here's the, here's the, we're going to look at this and you're going to see how easy it is for you and I to have haughty eyes. These things that he's talking about. Um, anybody ever spread discord? Okay. Why don't we just do a show of hands? Okay. Anybody ever lie? Okay. Who, who, who doesn't have their hand up? You can just keep your hands up because this will apply to you. Um, okay, you lied. Anybody ever been arrogant? Okay, that applied to you too. Um, anybody ever spread discord? Okay, that applied to you. Anybody ever uh, do something evil and think in their mind, I'm going to do that to them. I wish they could hope they get pulled over. Pretty much every one of these things, okay, this applies to us. In other words, that it can really easily sneak in. But no, not all, we're, uh, I haven't ever killed anybody, but Jesus said, if you call your brother a fool, you idiot. Okay, so you're kind of, all of these apply to you and me, okay? So, uh, but, I, but what seemed right was that we just talk about, Talk about the look in the eyes. If we're going to, do not be wise in your own eyes, but fear the Lord and shun evil. We're going to talk about that first piece of what does it look like to have a haughty, a haughty spirit, haughty look. Go with me to um, 2 Samuel 24. And so this is a passage, um, and we're, uh, you, there's, this is a passage, well, we're going to read this whole passage. Let's just read it, Okay. Uh, because there's, there's just so much here. Um, again, it says, The anger of the Lord um, burned against Israel, and he, incited, uh, and he incited David against them. Can I just use this? Uh, put up the ESV, because this is going to be the closest translation to the BSV. I just have spent, this is where I, I read out of uh, for my Bible reading, so that's why I, I, uh, I want to go here. All right? So 2 Samuel 24, uh, and we're going to roll, roll, roll the 2 Samuel to the ESV. Um, all right. So this is a, uh, the, you can find this in this passage here. You can find this passage in Exodus chapter 30, uh, verse 11 through 16. It's good to read more than one account of this, pa of this passage. Again, Exodus 30, 11 through 16, and also in 1 Chronicles 21 one through six. There's a uh, kind of this story here 
um, for those, all right? Uh, and Chronicles is a lot further. It's really a parallel account um, of this exact passage, First Chronicles chapter 21. But here it says this. We're going to read out of, um, start in verse 1. The anger of the Lord burned against Israel, and he stirred up uh, David against them, saying, Go and take a census of Israel and Judah. So the king said to Joab, the commander of his army who was with him, Go now throughout the tribes of Israel from Dan to Beersheba, Beersheba and register the troops so that I may know their number. So here's what's going on. Uh, they're, the Lord is not happy with Israel. In other words, there's a time of judgment. Um, and so uh, what, what he has to work with man's choice. See, because uh, sometimes you read in these Old Testament, it's like, oh, God just does everything. But David, um, David, David had to make a choice, and what he made it is a choice. He, he's like, you know, man, I just would really like to know how much, how many troops I have, you know. You know what I'm talking about? Like, we've been conquering some land. Like, I've been doing really good. Like, I just want to, I got a big fat wad here. I mean, anybody ever had a big fat wad? Maybe you just sold something. Maybe you did good on something. Maybe you got a fat bonus paycheck and you get a wad. Anybody ever had a wad? Anybody ever like to count the wad? Anybody just like to kind of kind of feel the wad, like how thick it is? Like like that's a that's a that's a chunk, boy. Am I the only one that's like, God, that kind of feels good? <laughs> got the roll, right? As a little kid, sometimes we, or sometimes what we will do is we'll get one dollar bills for like little kids and put like a put like a hundred one dollar bills in there, so they got they get the feel of roll, you know, uh, because there's something about that that is like, it really is satisfying. Anybody know what I'm talking about? What it does is it says, "You got this." What it says is, you can do what you want, when you want, how you want. Anytime you want. Because you got the you got the money. Right? All right. So tonight's gonna be a good night. All right, let's keep going here. So this is what's happening in David. He's kind of getting a little exalted in pride. He is saying, Man, I want to know how good I mean, I know I'm doing good, but how good am I doing? You know. How good. So he says, hey, Joab, uh, which he's coming next week, um, but this is not that Joab, um, the commander of his army who was with him. He said, now go throughout the tribes of Israel to Dan to Beersheba and register the troops so that I might know their number. I want to look at how much I got. But Joab replied to the king, may the Lord your God multiply the troops a hundred times over and may the eyes of, of my Lord, the, uh, the king, see it. But why does my Lord, the king, want to do such a thing? Like in other words, he's, he's saying, Job's coming and saying, hold on, what? Like the Lord's blessed you, like let him keep blessing you, and he's blessed you. But why are you, why are you wanting to see this? Like he senses pride here. He senses something's wrong. He senses beep, 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 beep. Can I tell you? Joab, he was the commander of his army. He was like a mighty man. How many of you have ever heard stories about David and his mighty men? Okay. Um, it's great to have a, be a king. But if you don't have a, some friends that can speak to your life, you are in a place of danger. Uh, if you are a child and, and your mom or your dad speak into your life because they love you, they don't, they're not, their goal is not to control you and to manipulate you. If you have an aunt, an uncle, a grandpa that sees something and says something to you, you can take it as uh, like, like David takes the word from Joab here and ignores it, and, and, and you're going to lead your life yourself. You can Pride it goes on a solo ride. And so... You can, you can do that, but what's going to happen is you're, you're going to 
be positioned for a fall. This is where it's so important to even have, uh, as a pastor, to have a pastor where you are, are uh, coming and hearing the word taught to you as well, to where you aren't just like, hey, big boy pants, I'm the man, I do what I want, when I want, how I want. Submission is important. Okay, all right. Anyway, so Joab replied to the king, May the Lord your God do this, uh, multiply your troops a hundred times over, and may the eyes of, the, of my Lord or the king see it. But why does my Lord, uh, my Lord the king, want to do such a thing? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Isn't that interesting? Against Joab. And against the, because what you do, you sometimes you, we think that in our lives, it's just private. Your decision, what you want to do, do you want to do. But this word was David, but it was against Joab. Isn't that interesting? Because it was going to bring judgment upon the people of God. What he was, his, his decision here to count his troops and to be exalted in himself and look how good he's done and look all the ground that he's gained and look how big his kingdom has become. Joab, Joab sensed that this was a judgment against him because as a leader... Your, what you do is going to affect your kids. As a leader, as a husband, as a wife, as a family, like you're going to affect that. It's going to trickle down those who are coming after you. Well, I don't have any kids yet. Okay. Those who come after you. All right. Let's keep, let's keep on going. The nevertheless, the king's word uh, prevailed. So Joab and the commanders of the army departed from the presence of the king to count the troops of Israel. They crossed the Jordan. They camped near a, uh, Aurora, uh, south of the town in the middle of the valley, and they proceeded to Gad and Jazir. Then they went to Gilead and the land of, where name we're not going to try to pronounce, and on to Danjan and around to Sid- Sidon. They went toward the uh, fortress of Tyre and all the cities of the H- Hivites, and Canaanites, finally they went on to the Negev of Judah to Beersheba. At the end of the nine months and 20 days, having gone through the whole land, they returned to Jerusalem. And Joab reported to the king the total number of troops. In Israel, there were 800,000 men of valor who drew the sword. So these are like knights, right? Or like just, just they're fighters. That's a, that's a bunch of guys, isn't it? Like, that's pretty good. You got 800,000 people that are drawn the sword to fight for you, who drew the sword. In, and in Judah, there were 500,000. So again, this was in a divided kingdom, right? And it's north, and south, north and south kingdom, okay? Uh, and it says, in one, uh, let's see here. After David had numbered the troops, his conscience was stricken. And he said to the Lord, I've sinned greatly in what I have done. Now, O Lord, I beg you to take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have acted foolishly. So if you were to go to Chronicles, you would see the same passage, and he, wa- he wanted to see what was going on in Chronicles. Let's go there. Let's go there. We have time, and this is where we're going to do, do today, uh, where we're going to spend our, our time today. First Chronicles chapter 21. You know, sometimes it's good just to read the word and let it read you. How many of you know when you read the word, it reads you? Um, so, again, uh, and I, it says this, uh, the accuser or the adversary, verse, 20, or verse 1 of chapter 21, it says, Then Satan rose up against Israel and incited David to take a census on Israel. So David said to Joab and the commanders of the troops, Go and count the Israelites from Beersheba to Dan. Bring me the number. But Joab replied, verse 3, May the Lord multiply your troops a hundred times over, my Lord and King. Are, are they not all servants of my Lord? Why does my Lord want to do this? Why should he bring guilt on Israel? Okay, so this is, kind of gives a little more color there, doesn't it? So Joab, Joab questioned the king. You don't question me. Joab questioned the king. Um, and, and he said, why do you want to bring guilt on Israel? Nevertheless, the king's word prevailed against Joab. So Joab departed and traveled through Israel. Then he returned to Jerusalem. And Joab reported to David the total number of the troops. In all the Israel, there were 100,000 1, men who drew the sword, including 470,000 in Judah. But Joab did not include Levi and Benjamin in the count because the king's command was detestable to him. So you have these two different accounts. You have these two different counts, a little bit different even in counts. 
So anyway, it's interesting. You have the, both of these are the same same account, yet the numbers are a little bit different. Yet he says he withheld some things on this one. Doesn't show that on the other one. So again, just a clearer picture of of different uh, again of all the people that were in in the camp. How he was counting because the king's command was detestable to him. So he didn't like it, and he withheld judgment. Joab withheld judgment from both uh, Levi and Benjamin by not including them in the count. Anyway, let's keep, let's keep on going here. So after this, we're going to go back to verse twenty or chapter twenty four, picking up in verse ten. After David had numbered the troops, his conscience was stricken, and he said to the Lord, "I have sinned greatly in what I have done. Now, O Lord, I beg you to take away the iniquity of your servant, for I have acted very foolishly." When David got up in the morning, a revelation of the Lord had come to Gad, the prophet, or David's seer. So there was one that David had that he couldn't see everything. He didn't know everything. Is there anybody here that knows that they don't know everything? Did you know that one of the, one of the greatest gifts that you have in, uh, in marriage is to have the other person? Somebody that you're joined with that you wouldn't just be like, well, I just think this and, da, 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 and this is what we're doing. In my law, my house, my word's the law. no. It's good for you and I to have a seer. In other words, to be able to say, see what you don't see and bounce those things off. It's also good, the Bible says, that there's wisdom in a multitude of counsel. So maybe even this word, you think you're just going to go forward and jump off the, you know, and you could even call it faith. You could even call this, but the Lord, the Bible says that we are to walk by faith, not jump by faith, not leap by faith, not, and you might have somebody bring some counsel that is contrary to what you want. But there's wisdom in a, mul- there's in a multitude of counsel. Like you, you might, might be this would be a, a save your life from a fall. All right, let's keep on going here. So uh, the seer came uh, and a word of the Lord came to this prophet. In verse 12, it says, go and tell David that this is what the Lord says. So he didn't even, he, he just got a word of the Lord. Uh, I am offering you three options. Choose one of them, and I will carry it out against you. So he comes and says, uh, verse 13, So Gad went to David and said, Do you choose to endure three years of famine in your land? Do you choose to have uh, three months of fleeing the pursuit of your enemies, or three days of plague upon your land? Now then, think it over and decide how I should reply to him who sent me. David answered Gad, I'm deeply distressed. Please let us fall into the hands of the Lord, for his mercies are great. But do not let me fall into the hands of men. Do not let me fall into the hands of men. Isn't that a precious thing? David recognized, even in his missing it, he would rather be in the hands of the Lord than in the hands of men. How many of you ever? Uh, how many of you are ever had your nose rubbed into it? How many of you ever rubbed some noses in it? Yeah. So David is. Uh, he he says, "Let me fall in the hands of God." Verse fifteen. So the Lord sent a plague upon Israel from that morning until the that appointed time, and seventy thousand, seventy thousand of the people from Dan to Beersheba died. But when the angel stretched out his hand to destroy Jerusalem, the Lord relented. Isn't that interesting? The temple, the place of the city of God. Anyway, um, the Lord relented the calamity and said the angel, and again, I'm just talking about what you saw in Chronicles, all right, and how some people were kept out. Relented the calamity and said, and, the, and said to the angel who was destroying the people, enough, withdraw your hand now. At that time, the angel of the Lord was by the threshing floor uh, of Ar- Ar- Aruna, Aruna, the Jebusite. When David saw the angel striking down the people, he said to the Lord, Surely I, the shepherd, have sinned and acted wickedly, but these sheep, what have they done? Please let your hand fall upon me in my father's house. So what, what happened there? David's repenting. He said, this is, um, this is I, des- I deserve this. And, the day, and that day, Gad came to David and said to him, go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor uh, of the Jebusite. So David went up at the word of the Lord of Gad 
just as the Lord had commanded. When, when uh, our, I can't say that word. Um, somebody say it. Somebody hook on phonics it. Huh? Our, our, let's do it together. Our, uh, on, uh, arana. Arana? Ar- arana? Arana. 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 All right. Arana. All right. Arana. I like it. We'll go with Arana today. Um, so, <laughs> Arana said to David, my Lord. So now I'll always know that word. Isn't that funny? That's, that's how my brain works. Arana. All right. So Arana, so it will be like Jebusite, Hittite, Canaanite, you know. All right. Let's keep on going. Arana said to David, my Lord, the king, may, may take whatever seems good and offer it up. Here are the oxen for a burnt offering and the threshing sledges and, uh, and ox yokes for the wood. O king, Arana, give, O king, Arana gives all these things to the king. He also said to the king, may the Lord your God accept you. No, replied the king. In other words, David said, I insist on paying a price, for I will not offer to the Lord, my God, burnt offerings that cost me nothing. Anybody ever heard this verse? Oh, far be it from me is what it would say in the King James, right? Far be it from me to offer to the Lord that which costs me nothing. And so he, he's, he's repentant. He comes and he, he's going to make a sacrifice according to the word of the Lord. How many of you know it's important that you do according to what the Lord said? All right. And so he's coming up back under there, and he, he um, makes this offering. Verse, um, finish of verse 24. So David brought this, bought the threshing floor uh, and the oxen for 50 shekels of silver. And there he built an altar of the Lord and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. Then the Lord answered the prayers on behalf of the land, and the plague of Israel was halted. Boom. Back quick. So even the, even the prayer, and that's the, that's the end. That's the end of Samuel. That quick, repentance. So here's what, the, the, just this morning, I, I guess what I was talking about is when you and I count what we have and have the arrogant eyes to tell what I can do, I'm setting myself up to, to no longer look to the Lord and find out what he says in all my ways. And when I do that, I open the door For the enemy to bring destruction to my life through my decisions. So what does the Lord say? I guess I just want to go back to what does the Lord say? What does the Lord say about the decisions that you're making? Or maybe that you already made. That you haven't been able to uh, get clear on. Anybody ever make a decision they, and they keep, it keeps on coming back and their heart keeps on going, ah, ah, a few years back. Uh, I, had a, I did something. I bought a piece of land that I wasn't supposed to buy, and I, I was going to work some levers and do some things, and the whole time, not real strong, but then it just got stronger, and I was violating my heart. I was violating my heart, and I was, like, I was wanting to just ignore it. I was just wanting to just keep on going. How many of you know repentance doesn't say I'm sorry and keep on going? <laughs> That's not repentance. And if you're, if the repentance, this is how the Lord can turn some things for you. But if you're just going to keep on going, it's because you and I think that this is going to be the best way or I can still get what I really want. No, repentance is make that turn. And, and I, 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 I've told some people the story. Um, I don't know if I've ever told it from this pulpit on a Sunday morning. But I bought a couple pieces of land, and I was going to uh, build a couple houses. This was just a few years back um, because I wanted to get something. So I wanted to make some additional money so I could buy some land. And, uh, and so as I was doing it, it was like, oh, it's going to just, it's going to, your, your, your attention, you're just going to be distracted. You're going to be distracted. You know, the Lord's like, I didn't, you didn't ask me on this one. And I'm just like, Lord, you gave me this gift to do this. Lord, you know, you, you, you're trying to justify everything, and yet now here I am taking a, lo- a walk on the uh, driveway with my wife, and uh, we're hearing, we both have an earbud in, this, we're listening to the same message, and the same exact message, and something comes up in the message, and I'm like, oh my gosh, oh. right? Well, this time, because my, my decisions are not private, so now what happened is Joab spoke up in the form of Evan. And she said, or he said, 
the Lord said, hey, uh, what do you think about that? Ev, Ev, this is fine. Like, listen, yeah, I'm trying to lie to my heart, and it's not working so well, but I make it to the end of the driveway, and, and I kind of get us to switch topics somehow um, because I don't want to talk about what I, what I want to do. I want to do what I want to do. And, uh, and the Lord is gracious, and he's full of mercy. And his, his mercy is new every day. So you know what the Lord did again? He came again. And so just a couple days later, we, were, uh, we had to go to Branson uh, for a uh, little um, a retreat. That wasn't really a retreat, but it was a teaching session, uh, RMAI, which is a pastor's thing. And there was a guest minister, and it was wonderful. And that morning, he was talking, and he said that very thing. And this is where I got that statement. Because it was so true. He said, you can lie to your heart, but your heart won't lie to you. And I'm just like, son of a gun. (laughs) And he's just talking about stuff. And I'm just thinking, let's get out of here. I don't want to even be here. And as I'm sitting there, I'm just like, okay, all right, we're done. Good notes. But I don't really want to write any expound on what the Holy Spirit's saying. You know, I'll just write what he's saying. (laughs) Because... Because I don't want to write that extra portion. And so I'm sitting there, and I'm, I'm actually in the front row on the left side. And I'm like, okay, all right, we're done. All right, come on. All right, wrap it up, you know. Come on, wrap it up. And so he turns it over. I'm like, all right, we're about ready. And it's probably like, probably getting time to eat anyway. So it's like, let's go eat. And the, Tom Cromwell was like, I just sense uh, the Lord's not done yet. <laughs> Jesus, get me out of here. And it's what he was trying to do. He was trying to get me out of the place that could have been a place for fall. And, uh, and so uh, what happens is he's like, let's just wait on the Lord for a little bit. So he's just like, all right. So he said, and he said I, I, I don't, I don't, I, I can't, I don't know what it is, it's some, there, but there's something here. There's something here. And so he said, why don't we just uh, take, take a minute and let's just uh, pray in the spirit. And so what, why would you do that? Well, when you pray in the Spirit, the Bible says that you don't speak unto men, you speak to the Lord. And that when you do that, you're praying out mysteries. So there was something mysterious or a mystery to him that he couldn't pick up here, but he was getting something here. And so this is why the gift of the, 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 gift of the Spirit in heaven speaking in tongues is given to you and me. That, we, that you and I would be able to release our will to discover his will. And so that when we pray in the Spirit, we'd pray also not that you would just pray in the Spirit, but that you would be able to interpret. Okay? And so he's, we're, we're just kind of like praying in the Spirit. And I'm, I'm over here going, uh, I'm more like just like, I don't want to be here at this point. I'm ready to be done. And it had just gotten, it just had gotten strong. And, uh, and I just wanted to be done. I was at the place of just almost to be able to where there was no looking back. You know what I'm saying? Like when you make a decision and you want to make that decision bad enough and now you already made it. So now it's all the way in and the only way, it's like jumping down the slide. The only way out is going through. And it's what you wanted to do the whole time. So I'm sorry, I'm repentant, and we got out of the slide. That was fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? And so I was just at that, I was at the cusp of the lands were broke up, and, and, and uh, house plans were d- d- determined, and I was ready to go, and it perked. What does that mean? That just means we got all the green lights, green lights everywhere. And right before I could make that decision, this lady starts screaming behind me, this little lady from, uh, from France, little with a hat on, and she starts screaming in tongues. And I'm just like, oh, my Jesus, what the heck? And then she interprets what said, did I not tell you? Have I not said? Oh, my gosh, I'm like. Okay. And I'm thankful for the mercy of God. 
to come and interrupt and interrupt my will to get me to choose what I really, really wanted. I was convinced I wanted all, but what I really wanted, he knew. And so this is why uh, you go back to Proverbs chapter 3. Uh, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Okay? If you're, uh, uh, let's say you're a, a young lady and you're dating this guy and he's got big muscles and he's tan and he looks the part, but your heart is saying, not him. You can press through that. I'm not talking about Speedy over there. You. <laughs> But let's, let's say, let's use a guy instead, all right? No, then what I'm saying is you got to trust your heart. you got to trust the Lord. When he says that's not the one, don't keep on going, keep on going, keep on going. Kind of, I'm using myself as an example. Um, maybe this is the Lord reminding you today and saying, hey, breaks. Make that adjustment. And it was so plain and so left turn today to go that way that the Lord is saying, hey, you're, you're about to make a decision that you've been going, nope, I don't like that, I don't like that, I don't, or I want that, I want that, I want that, but inside it's going, nope, 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 yield. Because Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5, trust in the Lord with all of your heart in all your ways, yada, know him. Lord, what do you say about this? And he'll direct your path. And hate Go on to the, or trust it, lean not to your understanding, but in all your ways, submit or acknowledge or know him, and he will make your path straight. The Lord will work it out. But do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Hate a prideful look. Hate a prideful way. Because what that does, just as it did to, to, to David, it opens the door for destruction upon you and, and those who are around you. And anyway, that was, that's, that's the Lord. We're going to close with that. We're going to make, we're going to make those adjustments. Let's stand this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the adjustments. Whatever adjustments that need to be made. We're going to, uh, we're going to, we're going to will, we're going to say, we're going to quote the word of God today. And we're going to will to do his will. Go ahead and put up Philippians. Um. Uh, I think four. No, Philippians two, Philippians two thirteen. Philippians two verse thirteen, and we're going to quote this, and we're going to make this as our confession today. Uh, one of the greatest things you and I can do is find a word when the, when we're reading the Bible and we see something that applies, that we would make that our confession. That you and I would just take the word of God and put it in our, our mouth and say, that, that, I, I want that, or that's my will. And so the, anything that says right here, so as far as God who works in you, both to will and to work or to do his good pleasure. So you could say it this way, God's at work in me. God's at work in me. You could say it this way, God work in me. God work in me. To will. To desire. What you desire. Do a work in my heart today. To will and to do what pleases you. That my pleasure would be your pleasure. Lord, have your way in me today. Work in my heart. I trust in you with my heart. So clarify your will to me this morning. Clarify your will. That I would know clearly what you're speaking to my heart. And that I would do 
what I, he- I am hearing you speak. Lord, if I've made a decision, show me the way out. Show me the way in agreement with you. I come into agreement with you, and I say, I will to do your will. Come on, somebody. I will to do your will. I desire what you desire for my family, for my steps, for every day of my life. You are so good at taking care of me. Lord, where I've tried to take care of myself, where I've been too aware of of what's in my hand or how I got to make it come about, Lord, I surrender that to you. And I just say, I trust you to bring about what my heart longs for but even to place the desires in my heart that I long for most that I wouldn't settle that I wouldn't settle for less than your best Thank you for your best. Lord, we thank you for your best. Thank you for your best in our lives. That we don't settle for our way. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen, 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 amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank, we're going to close the service this morning. Uh, if you're here this morning and you don't know Jesus as the, your Lord and Savior, uh, the Bible is really clear that, that you and I, our salvation is not in our works. Uh, it's by grace. What Jesus did on the cross, how he died on the cross, how he rose again. The Bible says if you believe in your heart and you confess with your mouth, Jesus says, Lord, you'd be saved. You know, maybe you're here this morning and you've never done that. Maybe you've never done it before men. Maybe this would be a great morning to do that before men this morning. To confess the Lord before uh, your family. To confess, confess the Lord. Maybe that's you this morning. But if that's you this morning, you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. Or, or you know the Lord is, you've been walking your own way. And what I was talking about this morning was, uh, w- w- was, was about repentance and prideful. The Lord was talking to you about coming back to him. That could be that as well. But if that's you this morning, uh, with your with your hand lifted up, if that's you, you want to give your life to Jesus, you don't know that you've done that, or you've got to give your life back to him, and you want to tell uh, tell the world. So the, you know, the Bible says, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. If that's you, I'll just ask you to lift your hand, and, ask, and I'll have you come down forward. If that's you, go ahead and lift your hand. Anybody here? Thank you, Lord. Anybody here? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, thank you, Lord. If your hand's lifted, you can come come on down front. It'll be a you'll be a step of faith. You'll find that it'll take a, a strong step uh, in, in the direction that God. If you've been trying to get out of that step. There'll be a strong step in that way. So if that's you, come on down front. I thought I saw a hand. I'm not sure. I'll wait. Yeah, come on down front. Come on, Bubba. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. You know, when we respond to our heart, this is what was going on. There was a, there was a conversation in a heart. In the same way that David had a conversation with the Lord, there was a conversation going on in his heart. And because God was wanting to do something and he was wanting to stop something, he was wanting to move on his behalf. David. This is why you don't do here. I've already done this before. I did blah, 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 blah. But I trust here. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. In the name of Jesus. So let's just bow our heads and close our eyes this morning. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Father, I thank you right now. I'm going to pray over you. And then you're going to pray with me. Father, I thank you right now for salvation.
for just a work being done in this life. Hallelujah. Healing. Restoration. So the plague stopped. <laughs> Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Just repeat this after me. Say, Father, today, today, I surrender my heart, my whole life to you. I trust you my salvation in every part of my life. Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross. You rose again and you raised me up to sit with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. When you know in your heart you're going the right way, when you know in your heart you have confidence before the Lord, your faith works. When we are not going the way that we know our heart is telling us, even our prayers are hindered. God just is about alignment, amen? amen? Thank you, Lord. We love you. We bless you. We'll see you Wednesday night. And God bless you. Amen.